Hello, everyone that's joining. We're gonna get, give everyone a couple minutes to get situated and then we'll begin. Okay. All right, let's begin. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Really excited for our webinar. We're gonna be talking about clear site progress tracking and we have two very special guests from Commodore Builders. So we'll go ahead and get started. So it's officially the one year anniversary of clear site. Uh, we have a lot of really exciting things that we're gonna be covering today. So hope everyone appreciate, appreciates this Seinfeld gif. <laughs> As, as for today's agenda, we're going to be first going through introductions for open space and our special guests from Commodore. And then we're going to talk through everything that we've released within ClearSight progress tracking over the past year. And then our special guests from Commodore Builders will be sharing specifically how they're using ClearSight progress tracking on their projects and more about you know, how they're using open space and the success that they've seen. We're then going to talk through what's up to what's to come with ClearSight progress tracking. So we're going to go through the roadmap and then conclude today with a, with a Q and A portion. So we'll try to go through everything in thirty or forty minutes and leave at least twenty uh, for questions. But we've got a lot to cover today, so really excited. Um, everything will be shared to you after our call today, so the recording will be given to everyone. Um, so if you've registered and maybe couldn't attend the whole thing, the recording will be shared with you. And feel free to also post any questions that you have in the Q&A box, and we'll do our best to address them at the very end of the call during the Q&A portion. So introductions. Today from OpenSpace, you have myself, Georgie. I'm an onboarding manager on the enablement team. And I'll pass it to Jess Lamb, director of product. To hey, everyone. Yourself. Thanks, Georgie. Jess Lamb, super excited to be here today. I can't believe it's already been a year since we were here. <laughs> I was here talking to you last year. Um, and yeah, we've been hard at work on ClearSight for the last 12 months. And we have a lot of exciting things in store for the next, well, <laughs> way more than 12 months. But uh, I'll let mm -hmm. others tell you about that later. Um, I'll hand it off to Mike Trabold next for an introduction. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks, Jess. Um, Mike Trabold, I'm an associate product manager here at OpenSpace on the ClearSight team. Um, I work with new trackers um, and new clear site functionality. So really excited to uh, share again, some of that roadmap uh, where we're thinking in the near term and long term a little bit later on. Um, yeah, I'll turn it over to Michaela. Hey everyone, my name is Michaela Ryle. I'm on our product team as well, working on clear site trackers, some of which you'll hear uh, Mike tell you a little bit more about later. And I'm super excited to tell you about what we've done with clear site in the last year and, and hear more from Commodore Builders. And I will pass to Nikia. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikia Chrysostomo, and I'm the head of community here at OpenSpace. Um, prior to joining OpenSpace, I was in the construction industry for several years. And my favorite part of the job was really building relationships with all the AEC professionals. So I feel very lucky to be able to continue doing that through my role here at OpenSpace. Wonderful. Thanks, Nikia. And now I'm really excited to introduce both Amanda and Natalie with Commodore Builders. I used to actually be their customer success manager and they were such a pleasure to work with. They do so, so much with open space and they're such an amazing company. Um, so I will let them introduce themselves. Amanda, would you like to start? Sure, um, my name is Amanda Finnerty and I've been the director of internal operations at Commodore for the past 16 years. And I've been in the construction industry for over 20 years. Um, in my role, I work with the teams to develop our standard operating procedures and I manage our IT department. But the primary um, role, my primary role is really implementing and managing all of our software. So that's where come, OpenSpace comes into play. All right. Um, 
Thank you, Amanda. So my name is uh, Natalie Asnes. I'm a senior project manager at Commodore Builders. I've worked also in this industry for a little over 20 years. Um, I always try to find ways to do things better and smarter. And I think uh, open space is an amazing tool. I mean, uh, you'll hear me more about it uh, later. So I'll pass it back to you guys. Uh, Nikia, I think uh, you're on the next slide and you'll hear more later about us. Thanks, Natalie. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie and Amanda. So before um, today's webinar, we actually had a lot of questions from the community about um, ClearSight and specifically from open space users who just haven't used ClearSight yet. So your perspective today and sharing your stories will be very valuable to our users. So yes, um, this slide. Um, it is exactly a year since we launched um, ClearSight at our ENR webinar, March 23rd, 2021. Um, and it was Jess Lamb who presented it then uh, as the future of automated progress tracking. <laughs> and as you can see before and after photos, we've gone through so much growth. You see just mustache, long flowy hair. He now has a tan and look at that great smile. <laughs> and that is all <laughs> due to you, um, our user community. Uh, you have been great partnering with us, testing out our features, um, giving feedback, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and you made Jess so happy. So um, thank you all. And to spread that Jess Lamb joy, next slide, please. We wanted to have some giveaways for you all um, at this webinar. We don't normally do this, but to celebrate our anniversary, birthday, whatever you want to call it, um, we have some giveaways for you. So all you have to do is join the community and you can win some of these prizes. So at the end of our slides, right before we get into the Q&A portion, we will open up the poll for you to participate and we'll drop the link in the chat. So um, stick around and keep an ad for that. And that poll will be posted by Mike Tribbled in our community. It'll be a one question poll. We just want you to vote on one thing because we want to get your feedback on our roadmap. And all you have to do is after filling out that poll, leave a comment on the post about why you voted the way you did. Just by doing that, you automatically get a $20 Amazon gift card. All participants get that. Um, I know some of you may be in regions where there is an Amazon, so we will send an equivalent to it. Additionally, we have um, an Ember travel mug to raffle off. So I feel like an Ember spokesperson, but you see it right there. Um, if you go on the Ember website, it's actually sold out. So it's highly sought after. And so we have one to raffle off. It is a smart temperature controlled <laughs> travel mug. I'm like selling this off, but um, we have one <laughs> and all participants will be entered into the raffle and we will randomly choose one winner and announce that in the community on Monday. And finally, the last prize you can win is an ideation session with our product team. So the product team will actually read every single comment that is left on that poll and we'll pick out the top ones that they find the most interesting or the best ones and invite you to a session with them. So this is a great opportunity for you to give feedback directly to our product team and potentially influence our ClearSight roadmap as well. So um, we'll give instructions later for the um, with a link and the community, if you're not part of it yet, it's free for all AAC professionals to join. If you're an existing open space user, even easier because we you can use your open space login. We have single sign on for it. So um, that is it for the fun stuff. We will now dive into the actual serious stuff. And Michaela will go through our ClearSight journey this past year and how much it has grown as much as just Lamb's hair. So Michaela, <laughs> off to you. Thanks, Nikia. So you know, one year ago today, we announced ClearSight progress tracking, but even months before that, before we even started building ClearSight, we started by talking with all of you. And really what we heard was that your team's most valuable resource was time and that you wanted information about what was happening in the field and you wanted it quickly without having to comb through photos every day, which is really why we built ClearSight progress tracking. So how does ClearSight work? Essentially, ClearSight uses the same images that your team's are capturing with our core product, except with ClearSight, we've chained our open space vision engine to identify materials and quantities installed from those images. So your teams are able to make decisions, identify potential delays, and coordinate across different parties on your site using this objective ClearSight progress data. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Nikia. So, you know, when we started with ClearSight, we had the goal of tracking key milestones along the critical path. And we started off by tracking walls, but today we're also able to track concrete ceilings, 
electrical, mechanical, and most recently doors. So for any existing sites who wanted to track doors, this should be set up on your site in the next few weeks. Uh, we also have quite a few trackers that are in development that Mike Gerbold will tell you a bit more about later in the presentation. And if you take a look at this GIF, we have over 100 projects that are tracking with ClearSight across 14 different countries, um, which is pretty exciting. Do you want to jump to the next slide? So since ClearSight's launch, we've actually tracked 150 million square feet of projects. Some other fun stats are that we tracked 1.3 million linear feet of framing, more than a million feet of ductwork, and 39,000 electrical receptacles. We can jump to the next one. So we're working with some of the most advanced teams in the AEC industry. And really what we're hearing from our customers is that project teams who've historically used manual progress tracking processes are supplementing those processes with objective data. And then teams that are facing manpower constraints are now able to get ahead of potential impacts to schedule and avoid time consuming disputes or disagreements. So ClearSight progress tracking is really allowing our partners to automatically measure quantities so that they can stay on schedule, plan resources, and quickly prove pay apps, which I think is a great transition. I'll hand it over to Amanda now who can share more detail about her, how her teams at Commodore Builders are utilizing and gaining value from ClearSight and open space. Thanks, Michaela. Um, so I will just start by um, telling you a little bit about Commodore. So we're a $500 million construction management firm based in Boston. We build projects in the commercial, life science, institutional, corporate interior, and public sectors. And it's really a great place to work. Obviously, I've worked there for over 16 years. Our mission is to make the project easy for our customers. And we have about 200 employees that do that every day. So that's a lot of employees, but we still need to be efficient. I love that time is our most valuable resource. And um, we have some really great clients too, and we've built some great projects. We're a veteran owned company and we're uh, very passionate about sustainability. And in fact, we just won the Construction Sustainability of the Innovation Award. And on along the lines of innovation, it's not just sustainability, it's everything that we do on our projects. That's something, um, innovation is one of our core qualities. We have six qualities of excellence and innovation is one of them. And I'm a strong believer that using new technology to do things better and more efficiently, efficiently is, is um, incredibly important. And that's how we came across and uh, why we're such a big fan of open space. I learned about open space at Procore Groundbreak and I was so amazed when I saw it there, um, I immediately came back and we set up two beta projects right away. One of them being Natalie, who's you're gonna hear more from her. Um, and as soon as we set it up, we saw the value just immediately. It's such a great tool, just the base of open space. And so we presented to our leadership team after just a month and got approval to go enterprise within two months, which is absolutely unheard of for us normally. So everyone saw the value immediately and our teams were, I, I mean, I was so busy in those first two months getting all the projects set up because as soon as people saw it, they had to have it on their project. It was such a huge time saver. And as one of our supers said to me, he was like, oh, after using open space, I'll never take a picture again. So then, um, you know, and working with open space, so getting set up and everything right from the start, our relationship has been fantastic. They're a true partner with us. I saw that prize for the, the team um, uh, session. That's actually a great prize. We work, they, you know, we work with them all the time to give feedback and to test out tools. And they're just a great to, team to work with us. I mean, I've worked a lot with Jess in the past year since he's been uh, the, you know, the developer clear sight and we as soon as we saw that so i think we saw it right when they were they it wasn't even 100 percent ready yet and open space showed it to us and uh, both natalie and i and a couple others in our company were just blown away by what the potential was for what it could do and so once again we jumped in on a beta before it was 100 percent and we started using that, uh, using ClearSight progress tracking on one of our projects. And the project wasn't even, um, it, it had, uh, was already partially or near completion. 
by the time open space was fully implemented on this project. And even, even though we didn't have it from the very beginning, we caught something just by implementing on that project. We were able to catch up and see that there was a trade that was falling behind. And we had a, like most projects, we had a drop dead end date that, and ClearSight was able to show us that we weren't gonna meet it at the pace that we were going. And we were able to look at the production rate that we were getting and adjust our manpower and make our schedule. So right away, the, you know, without question, the value, we saw an immediate value in ClearSight. So since that time, I think we're using it on six or seven projects. And um, at the pace we're going, you know, people are learning more about it. We're doing a slow implementation on this one because it's a little bit more, uh, well, it's actually not that much more complicated, but it's, uh, we just, uh, just, just, we're just going, taking a little bit slower, but I expect that we'll be enterprise with this by, you know, within the next year or so. It's, it's just been incredibly valu valuable to us. And, um, you know, I'll let um, Natalie talk about more of the use on the project. I could go on and on, but I think, you know, she uses it day to day. I just implement it. So I think I, I'll let her jump in here. <laughs> well, thank you, Amanda. So um, as Amanda mentioned, you know, I've been an early adopter in the beginning and uh, really like uh, we love the tool. It's so easy to use and it's really uh, terrific. I mean, uh, just open space itself was great during COVID and it's also for remote project when people can't come to the site and it really improves the collaboration with the project team. So when we go to ClearSight and you see uh, one of my projects on the screen, you know, I'll give you three examples of application where we have been using uh, ClearSight in the last few weeks. You know, I mean, we have been using ClearSight now for a little while, but just like some example that could be uh, showing you how important it is for us. Um, one of them would be um, just like last week, we had the um, HVAC foreman during a, a team a weekly PM foreman's meeting that was like challenging the progress. You know, it becomes almost a game. You know, they are looking at the percentage complete, you can see on some of those screens. And then they were looking at which area were shown as completed versus not started. And uh, it was like, no, no, I just finished it this morning. So we had to explain him because this is so quick, you know, to get the results. That's uh, another great feature is we pretty much get that right away. And, you know, we had just done the capture. And even though he had just installed the duct worker an hour prior to the meeting and he was like, no, no, I have finished this one. And we're like, yes, <laughs> I mean, this is really smart, but it's not live. <laughs> you know, it doesn't just like happen to show on the screen. So that shows you how, you know, people are relying on it and how, you know, the speed is very important. Uh, another example I would take would be um, our drywall company. Actually, we partner on the project you see on the screen with our uh, subcontractor. So uh, as on many projects, you know, sometimes drywall company happen to count the sheets daily, but it is really much better for them to find out what is going on and to pay attention to the items that could require designer feedback. Really, this is helping us optimize productivity. And instead of having to send someone, you know, it's all automated. And the benefit for them is very clear. You know, there is a feature, you can dive into the detail and see which area is not started. And then you can identify any kind of problem. Uh, one last example I would give would be, this is a really a great tool to share the data back, you know, with our office you know, such as with our scheduler or for pay application reviews. The insight can really give you provided estimated completion dates, such as what Amanda was describing for that other project. And it's much more efficient and accurate than if we had to guess it. Overall, you know, I, I think you can hear from what I'm describing that this is a tool that we use, you know, weekly, if not daily. It's really part of our culture now. And we find it uh, immensely valuable for collaboration and it can really flag issues early, such as subcontractor needing to add manpower that could be a lot more costly down the road. And um, I think I'll let now the open space team tell you more about what's coming up next, but you know, I hope uh, you can see how great it is for us. Can I jump in with one other thing for you? <laughs> Natalie just reminded me, one of the things that was really helpful as, for us on just from the very first project too, is that feature that says, that um, you click to say show not started. So we had a situation where the drywall had all been installed and they had 
demobilized, but the plumber hadn't finished some of the areas. Uh, they were there were wet walls, and so we were able to identify that, and it was clear. You know, we had to demobilize the drywall uh, subcontractor and then bring them back because they were held up by the plumber. And so we were able to just click that button and see what hadn't been finished. And you can use that for different scenarios, but it was it was extremely helpful at that time. There's just there's so much that you can learn from just these insights. And it, like Natalie said, it's so fast. The information is in your hand and there's no dispute about what is put in front of you. It's it, you're getting dead on accurate information rather than relying on a manual count of information. Thank you both so much. That was great to hear. Um, and now really excited for Mike Trebol to talk through what's to come. So roadmap and you know what, what we're working on, what the product team is working on. And beyond, yeah, thanks Georgie. Um, yeah, so this is an exciting question we get, uh, one we think about all the time and frankly love answering, and that's what's next. Um, what does year two look like for ClearSight? And uh, what are we thinking about beyond that? Um, so this is where I get to have some fun, uh, tease some of the features we're thinking about in the near future as, some of, as well as some of the bigger places we wanna take ClearSight beyond that. Um, but first, just a genuine thank you to Amanda and Natalie, um, not only for your insights today, but also the ideas, feedback, and ultimately the partnership um, you forged with us over the past year. Um, we're able to continuously improve our product due to the feedback and insights uh, provided to us by passionate customers having authentic experiences. And we've appreciated having both you and all of Commodore on board. Um, now onto this slide, I guess. Uh, we know that picking a technology partner, uh, especially one uh, for something as advanced as automated progress tracking, um, can be a difficult decision to make, whether it be, to Michaela's earlier point, um, teams with manual uh, tracking already in place looking to improve their processes with an automated solution, um, or just a team with labor constraints looking to uh, more quickly identify project risks. Um, with that in mind, uh, our CEO, Jeevan Calanthini, uh, recently just published an article in ENR on evaluating progress tracking solutions. It's a pretty comprehensive guide to evaluating your options and dives into some of the criteria that Commodore actually hit on today, um, such as scalability, accuracy, um, and that degree of completeness. Um, if you're interested, go check it out on ENR's website. Uh, Nikia will also drop a link to the article in the uh, in the webinar chat. Um, so now on to some of the fun stuff. Um, first up, uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, Fun announcement to always make, uh, and that's a new tracker, in this case, MEPFP. Um, today, ClearSight tracks mechanical ductwork. Um, this launch will flush out uh, tracking capability to most other overhead systems. Um, that'll include uh, plumbing, mechanical, fire protection, piping, um, as well as electrical conduit. Um, this has been our most requested tracker to date, so we're really excited to get this one off the ground. Um, development work for this is well underway, um, and we'll launch into a beta likely later next year. Uh, later this year, sorry. Um, and then up next, another new tracker, uh, in this case, finished flooring. Um, this really supports ClearSight's goal of tracking projects start to finish. Um, and a finished flooring tracker really brings to the table a focus on scopes of work that occur at the tail end of the critical path. Um, also, given the fact that it's the last trade to get installed, finished flooring will really help um, Teams is a pro powerful proxy for the completion of all work in a given space, um, not just the scope itself, which we think will really help teams uh, manage both work list and punch list planning. Um, when this gets launched, uh, we'll be able to track wood flooring, carpet, and VCT, as well as the uh, you know base trim or molding that'll get installed at the uh, floor perimeter, which itself is a great proxy for tracking wall finishes. Um, development on this work is uh, actually kicking off pretty soon, and we'll have a limited beta launch likely in early May. Um, next up, if you want to jump one ahead, uh, we're bringing some more firepower to ClearSight, um, this time around with scheduled data. Um, I'm hoping at least a few ears perked up here. Uh, the need for schedule functionality within ClearSight has been mentioned in a lot of conversations we've had with ClearSight users, so we're really excited to launch this feature. Um, with schedule insights, ClearSight will compare observations with schedule dates and allow you to see task by task, tracker by tracker, um, whether or not construction work in the field is being completed such that it finishes on time. Um, 
this functionality will be a really good second set of eyes for everything being tracked and be smart enough to raise the alarm bell when it sees slower than anticipated progress. Again, based on that objective, um, you know, can't quite be fought data uh, that ClearSight is so well known for. Um, you know, projects get delayed a day at a time um, and ClearSight with schedule is gonna give teams the, uh, you know, tooling to identify and remediate potential delays really before they impact those milestone dates. Um, Dev work on this is also well underway, and we'll be looking to identify ClearSight customers to beta test this with uh, probably within the next month. Um, lastly, if you want to go to the next slide, um, something users won't see directly in the product, but will definitely see the results of, um, and that's just improvements to ClearSight processing. Um, so improvements to the tracker AI are in beta testing as we all speak. Um, and this will improve just the processing speed of ClearSight captures, uh, as well as the accuracy of ClearSight reporting. Um, so already accurate reporting um, getting delivered to you faster, uh, uh, you know, and, and more directly. Um, but it doesn't stop there. Um, you can jump forward one. Um, we're always looking to where we can take ClearSight next, um, what features to build and what opportunities we have. Um, to help builders build better. Um, and here are a few of, uh, of those opportunities. Um, we wanna leverage the power of BIM in ClearSight, continue to improve, uh, oh, sorry, to continue to introduce uh, new and innovative uh, trackers as well as improve our existing trackers. Um, you know, offer room region or work breakdown structure based progress reporting um, and better integrate progress tracking data with your other systems um, as well as much, much more. Um, but that said, before we get there, we do want to hear from you. Um, we get some of our best product ideas from our customers and every step along the way, we're engaged with our community to help guide features and functionality and really just everything that we build. Um, so if any of these topics are jumping off the screen for you, get in touch. Um, we'd love to connect, uh, we'd love to connect and learn more from your experience, um, and a great place to do that is our community, um, community.openspace.ai. Um, that's where you can find myself, the rest of the product team, uh, and a growing group of open space users, as well as industry professionals to connect and share ideas with. Um, and speaking of community, if we want to go one bit further, um, one thing we do want to hear about you from is uh, what you're most excited for uh, with the, uh, the clear site projects um, that we've got in the pipe right now so that those two new trackers that schedule functionality um, and uh, you know those AI improvements um, go ahead and uh, if you jump into the community now in the next couple of minutes I'll be dropping a post um, with the poll information and asking you guys to comment um, share what or do you want to take clear site what features do you want to see what's important to you um, again we get some of our best ideas from uh, from you, the community. So we'd be really excited to uh, start that discourse um, today, um, and obviously set up some great conversations. Have a lot of great uh, have a lot of great chats. Um, and yeah, I guess with um, that said, Georgie, I can. Uh, that's the roadmap. That's where we want to take open space. Again, would love to do it. Um, you know, with all of you, and uh, I think we can turn things over to Q and A. Great. Um, we've seen some really great questions come in. Um, Mike, I think if you want to go ahead and read off uh, one of the first ones and we can we can kick off this Q&A portion. Yeah, so out the gate, um, Emil asking, does ClearSight work with uh, 2D plans as well or are BIM models required? Um, uh, good news is no, um, 2D uh, ClearSight works um, just as well with only 2D plans. Um, really the way that set up uh, works is you send us your drawings with the relevant, um, uh, you know, the, the relevant uh, information needed to track. So we want to see duct work if we're tracking duct work, walls if we're tracking walls, all that good stuff. Um, and really, that's it. Uh, all the setup on the back end is done by Open Spaces ourselves. Give us about two weeks to get the site prepped, and um, you'll be able to start tracking with insights. Um, yeah, no BIM models required. Um, so then uh, Ivana asks, are there plans for linking progress tracking with the 3D model to enable quantity extraction? Um, also, are there plans for understanding plan versus actual, so linking to the program? Um, so yeah, I guess a couple of things we've started to tease at today. Um, so 
we are uh, working, I guess, in the UK, it's program in the US, it's schedule, um, but we are working to bring uh, dates, expected start and finish date for trackers into the product um, so that you'll be able to have that baseline to compare, uh, you know, observed progress in clear sight against. Um, we'll have a beta for that in the next four to six weeks. Um, so if you're interested, you know, absolutely get in touch with us. Um, you know, we'd love to talk to you a bit more. Um, as far as the 3D model component uh, is concerned, so we do track right now off of 2D takeoffs, um, exclusively off of 2D takeoffs. Um, that said, you know, in that uh, beyond slide, we are talking about looking to unlock and leverage the power of BIM and 3D models within ClearSight. Um, so if you have any ideas um, on how you would expect that, uh, to function features you would want to see with um, automated tracking plus BIM, um, you know, jump into the community or reach out to us directly. Um, we'd we'd love to talk. Um, so, uh, Mukesh is asking, how is percent complete calculated exactly? Um, it's a good question. Um, we essentially take off um, all the scope um, that you'd want to track uh, from your drawings and report that, uh, re use that takeoff um, to report insights against. So the computer vision model knows where to look and has been trained to identify materials and photos. Um, we compare the quantity installed to that total quantity takeoff um, in order to generate that percent complete. Um, it's like Koch is asking, how much accuracy can we inspect in 2022 in identifying elements and progress? Um, yeah, I guess I, I can speak to our AI time. I, I, I can speak to our AI team a little bit. Um, would actually love to turn this one over to uh, Amanda or Natalie um, to learn a little bit more about your experience with uh, accuracy. If you want to share, sure, sure, I'll be happy to jump in. So, um, our experience has been uh, very, very good. Uh, the accuracy is um, is pretty much right there. I think we had a bit of uh, challenges on. Um, just one floor and it's really the outside wall, but uh, your support team as always has been uh, very responsive and within less than 24 hours, they were able to uh, identify, you know, like uh, what was going on and resolve it. So it's uh, really on point. Thank you. Cool. Um, yeah, and, and to add to that a little bit, um, you know, our AI team, and I'll, I'll say it correctly this time, um, they're always looking at ways to improve the clear side algorithms. Um, which in turn improve the accuracy of ClearSight, um, you know, really, really leveraging a lot of advanced and new technology. Um, so as far as, you know, what the future has in store, um, accuracy today is great. Uh, you can expect close to 100% accuracy for existing and future trackers today. Um, but uh, to Natalie's point, um, if an occasional mistake is made, um, we do have 24 hour support um, and a great network there to be able to make corrections on the fly. Um, and continuously improve um, that reporting. Um, and the so, other piece of that, sorry, Mike, the other piece of that is you also have to just make sure that the team is um, walking the full site and getting into all the areas. And then it, it is, I mean, all the feedback that I've had is it's it's very accurate. And um, so the, the teams trust the data of our teams when they get something like this, because it almost seemed too good to be true. So they wanna test it and see if they can make it not work and they've been happy with it. So they haven't been able to break it. <laughs> the only thing that doesn't work is if they just installed something five minutes ago and we did the capture of an hour ago, then it doesn't capture, but it's really not open space. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, us. People think it's like, oh, it just happens. We have to explain some people, no, it doesn't just like. <laughs> yeah, it's not magic, but it shows up on the next capture. So you'll some get it. People you'll get it so well, they think it's magic right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, that's that's helpful. Thank you both. Um, Emil, um, just moving on, um, asking again, um, seeing so many elements, uh, sorry, hi, seeing so many elements are still being WIP, what can ClearSight actually track at the moment? Um, yeah, so we have a handful of trackers that are live um, and available to get set up on your project sites. Uh, they include um, structural concrete, um, framing uh, and drywalling of walls and ceilings, uh, as well as acoustic style uh, installs of ceilings. Um, electrical receptacles, um, mechanical ductwork, grills, um, and uh, door frames and, and door panels. Um, 
so quite a few trackers right now um, with, you know, coming soon being the um, overhead mechanical uh, MEP and FP pipe work um, electrical conduit, um, which again, we'll go to beta in the next couple of months and then floor tracking um, similar, uh, we'll be going into a beta test in the next couple of months. So expect to see a, a continuous pipeline of, of, of new trackers coming down the, uh, coming down the pipe, but um, you know, obviously a pretty solid base to, uh, to get started with today. Um, so then Sylvie asking, uh, thank you, Amanda and Natalie for the share. Were you able to quantify the value of using ClearSight? Um, example, a project would have taken uh, 37 weeks instead of the 33 in reality. Um, I guess uh, Amanda or Natalie have either of you given that much thought or uh, realized that value? I could answer that one if you want, Amanda. Yeah. Um, you know, so from a particular standpoint, it's more like um, what it does is um, it eliminates inefficiencies. And it's it's more like when you have a target date, it's when people finish late and, you know, they look back and they don't know what happened. So that's one part. So you actually realize, so it, it really helps focus on areas that are not getting completed the way they should be more than, so it's not as much like finishing faster it's more like finishing on time, you know, it helps you track where you are. And then when you also look at the uh, productivity and estimated completion, yes, you can also rip the benefit from just looking at what is the productivity and what is the anticipated and then what it would be because in um, scheduling, we always have to assume a certain productivity for each crew, but we actually can now use real data, you know, like established over multiple weeks. And then it's very easy to forecast how long it would take instead of being uncertain so i think the accuracy so you 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 can't really say you save time it's the same concept as would you want to work overtime it's more like the time that you do not waste and then after that the accurate forecasting on what you're doing i would say yeah and, and open space if the um, correct open space forecast for you so you can enter your anticipate your scheduled end date for a particular tracker so say it's, you know, top top track or just the, you know, the drywall, you can say it's anticipated for this date. And then based on your production rates, you know, um, the clear site will tell you what the anticipated end date is. And so you can correct for that. Um, it, you know, if you continue at this pace, you're going to finish at this date. So you're able to look at what you're schedule your plan schedule date is and, and make adjustments. Yeah, I think open space is really valuable at alleviating that uncertainty. Um, and that is something, uh, uh, Amanda, to your point, I think the schedule functionality will really enhance that value. Um, being able to actually compare against your baseline and, and really not just see where production might be slowing, but you know, get a measurable impact um, in terms of either percentage behind or number of days behind. Um, you know, looking at that estimated completion date um, and, and rates of installation. Um, so, another question here about: um, Will there be connection to the Autodesk Construction Cloud regarding direct use of models stored in Docked and a better integration to issues? Um, great question. Uh, we are exploring an integration. Um, with Autodesk uh, Construction Cloud. Um, for a little bit of clarity, we do um, integrate now with Procore, BIM 360 Field, and uh, PlanGrid, um, which understood that uh, PlanGrid and BIM 360 Field are a part of the Autodesk family, a little bit separate um, from Autodesk Construction Cloud in terms of um, an actual integration is concerned. Um, but uh, we are exploring uh, an integration with the ACC uh, for our field note features um, probably this year, likely this year. Um, from there, uh, once we kind of have the, the mirrored um, or a, a integration that resembles what we have with plan grid today, um, we'll likely investigate um, feasibility of linking the model um, itself um, and improving the issues integration. Um, that's actually uh, linking the model to other sources um, like the construction cloud or even Revitsto um, are really interesting topics to us. So if you or anyone else um, is interested in discussing this a bit further, um, I think we would love to set up uh, possibly another community roundtable um, to connect, gather some more thoughts and um, 
understand, um, you know, what you'd like to achieve uh, and accomplish with some of these integrations we're investigating. Um, cool. Uh, Matt Hoey uh, asking, uh, where is the training of AI models uh, to apply the correct material components label occurring? Um, is this proprietary within open space or are you leveraging any open platforms from Google, Azure, et cetera? Um, yeah, it, it's a good question. It, don't need to go too much de detail here, but we built a proprietary classification model. Um, so not, not engaged with any third parties um, at this point. Um, and then Emil uh, asking, how far in the future can ClearSight give accurate predictions? Um, so uh, ClearSight's forward-looking predictions um, or, or forecasts, what it's doing is it's estimating the exact day um, your team will finish an activity. Um, you know, what's more actionable and often more accurate is that rate of installation we calculate uh, based on the materials identified in, in your captures. Um, so I'd say for any material that, or for any tracker or any floor that has started work on it, um, we can project out an end date for that scope. Um, and, you know, if, <laughs> if it's a very large scope um, or you're moving very, very slow, obviously that end date will be pretty far in the future. Um, but really, it, it reports against work that's in progress in the field. Um, okay, great. I think that's all we had for questions, um, unless Nikia, Georgie, anyone had anything else? I think you're right. I think that's a lot of really great questions there. So we'll just um, we'll wrap up and... Nakia, would you like to talk more about the community and just, you know, how to join and... Yes, um, as you have been mentioning throughout this presentation, um, if you have any more questions, if something else pops up in your mind after the webinar, um, comments, ideas, by joining the community, you can connect with us um, beyond like these types of events or webinars. Um, we have the link here, we can drop it in the chat as well. And just so if you want to directly connect with any of the speakers from today, we listed our um, community usernames on here. So Affinity is Amanda, and then we have Natalie, and then the rest of the open space team here. Um, when you're posting it, if you want to tag us directly, feel free to do that and we'll get that notification. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is the community poll, and I'm seeing some responses there already. So thank you so much for participating. Um, that the deadline for that is the end of the week. So participate by the end of Friday and we will be announcing winners um, next Monday. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much, Natalie and Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.